Hey everybody, Dave here. How are you doing tonight, tomorrow, yesterday afternoon, the second Thursday of yeah, six months ago? Syndicated pipe. Who's that? What he said. Syndicated pipe club time once again here. And as always, I have Greg, the Badger Piper, with me. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I didn't realize that uh, one of the your uh, listeners from your um, Star Wars podcast uh, hopped on there for a second. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, I, I don't, I don't remember his species, but he threatened to pop on for just a moment, and apparently he did. We've all been there. Uh, so some things are things are uh, going okay over here, other than uh, other being than it's cold. You know, other than being in uh, um, in the teens out here, uh, it may be a little bit warmer, but uh, usually, well, uh, at least the winds block, so that makes that's the biggest. I think that uh, does help. That does know, help absolutely. Uh, yeah. They always say it's not the heat, it's the humidity. Well, it's with winter, it's not the cold, it's the wind chill. Oh, yes, that is so true. The wind chill sucks. Mm-hmm. I mean, I look outside and go, hey, it's winter. Hey, we don't have enough snow because, well, apparently that's the thing now. Canada doesn't get snow, at least my part doesn't. But Toronto, the the, the premier is digging people out. Wait, what? Uh, not to get off on a, a tangent, but apparently in uh, the state of Washington, uh, two weeks ago or so, there was a snowstorm and a town refused to uh, send any of their plows to help out their neighboring town because they did not have like uh, the vaccination mandate requirements uh, in the town, and so they didn't want to put their plowmen in danger. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong on a detail or two on that, but I I know that they refused to um, help out because of some, um, I think, mandate kind of stuff. Sounds like here, our prime minister has mandated that truckers cannot cross into Canada if they are not vaccinated. We're all going to die of starvation. Mm -hmm. Unless uh, we can snap some pictures of our uh, leader at a party without uh, any... uh, masking or anything because if we can get that done then they have to remove all the uh mask and vaccination mandates like over in uh, the uk hmm. but yes well that was chipper <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it no it's funny he he gets uh caught and criticized and then like uh couple days ago he holds a press conference and goes okay I'm, li- I'm lifting everything up so that that was funny but uh uh but besides that like uh you know it's uh you know definitely whenever i i come out here at night uh well definitely <laughs> the first night i'm looking at is uh uh podcast night uh because uh if it gets below a certain threshold um i will be inside without a pipe uh, on the, except for as a prop, and uh, recording in there that way. Speaking of pipes, what are you smoking tonight? No, I am smoking um, Cornell and Deals uh, Engine 99, which is a nice uh, smoky English blood. And when my uh, Savinelli, a uh, gigantic uh, Canadian which uh, size-wise is probably around the same as that uh, Savinelli I sent you. I was going to say, it looks about the same as mine, size-wise. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, pretty uh, pretty lengthy. Doesn't really, uh, in order for 
pipe cleaner to go all the way through. You have to remove uh, the um, stem. But uh, yeah, how about you? Well, tonight I'm smoking some. I'm just trying to get, do the math in my head here real quick. Oh, I didn't put the date on it. Um, some Carrie's traditional Virginia. It's got some age to it. I, I not sure how much because I forgot when I retinned the, what was left. I forgot to put the date on the label. So that doesn't help, but it's around five years old. Nice. Is that in uh, Bones? Yeah, it's in uh, Morgan Bones. Bent Billiard. Very nice. Very good pipes. They are. They are. It makes me want to get one new, but I'll take my estate one. Yeah. No, and they have um, some really nice shapes. Uh, uh, Mor uh, Chris Morgan has some pretty interesting ones, like... Uh, I don't think it's available at the moment, but uh, I really like his lumber dog, where it's a shape of a lumberman, but with uh, you know the bowl and uh, of a bulldog and uh, diamond shank. So are we talking like the regular bulldog size, or is it a lumberman bowl, like like on that or on on mine, with the uh, the rings around it and the diamond shank to the length of a? Yeah, it's that I believe. Like, I don't think it's, like, a really long one, but uh, it's meant to kind of be more like, you know, the kind of the short stem, uh, longer shank kind of uh, gotcha. deal. Gotcha, gotcha. That would be interesting. I was going to be smoking a corn cob tonight. Um, <laughs> I've been bouncing all over when I've been listening to my podcasts that I mm -hmm. listen to. So, for example, Country Squire Radio, listen to that quite a bit, but I've been bouncing around. If like I get something from uh, my Patreon support where it says, hey, this has got an announcement on it, I'll bump that episode to the top of the list. So I've heard some of, Jan I've heard some of January's podcasts before I heard the Christmas episode, which I just did listen to this week, hmm. which is hilarious because... In the more recent episode, Bo gave a heartfelt apology to Canada because he got some backlash from the fact he didn't think Canada knows how to make whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it was a funny thing. So, of course, Canadians, you know, jumped on that bandwagon and corrected him and whatnot. And he apologized again. And his... Heartfelt apology is probably going to get some feedback too. <laughs> but in the Christmas episode, which I heard right after that, um, they were John David and Bo were uh, talking about you know what they'd want for Christmas: pipe or, pipe related or pipe adjacent. And when Bo was looking around, I guess on the Missouri Meerschaum website for, you know, what they were going to use for the plug for, you know, their their standard, you know, our good friends at Missouri Meerschaum segment where they do the promotion thing because, you know, they Missouri Meerschaum and Phil and all them over there support the show. He found a certain pipe. Oh. A certain pipe that I already have, the Tiberius. So I was going to, this is how my mind works, I was going to bring it out and start smoking it with you and bring all of this up, and then just clip this particular section of us recording the show, and then send it to Bo, directly. <laughs> and I went to get it, and then I realized my corncob pipes are still upstairs. Uh. I'm sitting there going, well... Of course, not knowing that we were going to be starting a little bit later than normal, I didn't go get it. Plus, the kids have been up and down, so I didn't want to go upstairs anyway and risk waking them up again. Right, right. Yes, especially uh, when they're uh, uh, 
you know, when you get uh, kids down, you don't want to disturb them. Yeah. And my youngest son is uh, not feeling well. I, I, I don't know. He, mm. He's he's not sick sick. He's not feeling well. Let's just put it that yeah. way. I'm not concerned that it's any COVID variant. I'm not concerned that it's anything serious. He just didn't want to eat supper. And then when, his, when, when my wife said, okay, well, you're going to go to bed then if you're not going to eat supper. He goes, okay, fine. I'm going to go to bed then because I'm not feeling good anyway. And he went to bed like an hour early. Wow. Yeah. For, and for a kid, that's pretty major. Mm-hmm. And for uh, adults like us, too. But uh, especially for kids. So you've been watching anything lately or just uh, having fun with Milo, keeping him alive, uh, doing things with the wife? What's been going on? Let's just continue. Make this our part two of what happened in the 11 weeks we were off. Yeah. And then uh, Pipe related wise, I had a, a question for you to, to talk about. Uh, okay. But I am, I'm currently running the gamut of uh, trying to find things for Milo to watch. And because uh, he, he's in this stage now where when you uh, try to change his diaper, he... Uh, that is pretty much becomes a professional wrestler and uh, works to get out of uh, you holding him down. And, uh, and it's all a, a fun game or it, it, he gets frustrated if you uh, keep working at it. So that's been fun trying to find some distractions for him. Uh, thankfully, the Apple TV has a PBS Kids app which is pretty nice uh it has a uh list of shows that uh you can kind of switch around between well uh, it, like the shows today are the same but like the episodes that are available switch each uh, week um so uh we i've been getting him to watch uh daniel tiger which is uh the well kind i, of I know i know daniel yeah. tiger oh okay now i you know talking to uh the, the pro dad over here, I, I probably shouldn't uh, <laughs> have to explain anything. Yes, yes. I um, already have four kids. Yes, we had a, um, each had a child the same year, but I already had three. <laughs> Daniel mm -hmm. Target. What's going to be different for me, though, is I've gone from the three boys to a girl. So the shows are probably going to get a little different. Probably not Daniel Tiger, though, because even oh, though no, Daniel... No. Daniel um, Tiger will stay. I, I mean, Daniel Tiger's a great show for kids. Boy, girl, mm -hmm. Apache Helicopter, a pretty, it doesn't matter. Yeah, has a pretty even amount of uh, genders for kids to find a character they like. Oh, yeah. Um, some of the other ones uh, he likes, um, one called Nature Cat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And uh, I like that one because uh, a good portion of the uh, voice cast are uh, um, Saturday Night Live people. So that makes it uh, pretty nice. Explains why it's so weird. Yeah. I, I, and plus, it all takes place in my uh, backyard of Chicago. So, uh, mm, hometown. It's also, yeah. It's a, well, I believe this one is actually paid for by. Um, the Chicago PBS station. Ah. So. That's the nice thing about um, being here in Canada, where I am at. I'm, like, in a great area for PBS. Detroit's right, you know, an hour away. If you, you know, you know go as the crow fly, Chicago's really only an hour. If I could fly, like, with wings, only about an hour in any direction. Buffalo, New York. Like, I can pick up a lot of stations here uh, under the right conditions. Like, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, with antenna. Right now in the winter, winter's great because I can, I can get a lot just because of how the science behind it works. I, I'm not going to bore anybody with those details, but let's just say line of sight when the leaves are off the trees is a lot better 
and line of sight when the leaves are on the trees. Yeah. But PBS from Detroit's always uh, pretty strong no matter what time of year it is. And Detroit's got, like, the main PBS channel and then two or three other ones on top of it that they send out with different programming. And one's Strictly Kids programming, so it works out. Mm. And, uh, yeah, like, there's there's a ton out there, but Nature Cat's a good one. My oldest was into that for a while. Octonauts, when he gets a little bit older, is a fun one. All my boys have liked that. Um, what else? I like, um, I don't know if he likes it that much, but, um, uh, I think, uh, Let's Go Luna might be one that he'll, uh, like as time goes on. I don't think I'm familiar with that one. Uh, it's about, uh, three, um, and, you know, it's kind of, it reminds me a lot of like a, a Nickelodeon cartoon from like the nineties art style wise, kind of like a, a Rocco's modern life kind of thing. And plus all the characters are all animals. Um, but they travel around the world each episode um, cause they're with uh, children of parents that work at a traveling circus. And uh, basically it's like a culture show where you get to experience oh, yeah. different cultures from around the world. And uh, their uh, friend that uh, travels with them is Luna, the moon who, uh, when she's not in the sky uh, as the moon, um, is a, oh, I know that show. Goes, okay, I know it now. As soon as you said the moon, not in the sky, I went, oh, I do know that show. And since there are no kids listening, I have a theory that whoever came up with the show was on something. Ooh. Yeah, I could see that. It was a very interesting trip. It made them a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the memes that I saw kind of going around recently, I, I'm sure you're familiar with like uh, the Elder Scrolls games. Um, Not as much as you like, think, but yes. Well, at least you're familiar with the names. Uh, so th in those games, there's a lot of lore um, mm -hmm. and uh, that you can pick up. And I guess for one of their, like, like it, it's basically like the size of a book that's in this uh, certain game. I think it, it, it's either Oblivion or Daggerfall. Um, it's not Skyrim, though. Um, the person that ended up writing all that um, came up with it uh, while he was at home on a week-long, uh, I think, mushroom binge or something. And, like, uh, the, one of the game directors came to his house to check on him and uh, took a picture of him when he found him because he was just kind of, like, laying in his kitchen in his boxer shorts and that kind of that picture goes around with uh, the backstory of uh, where it comes from. So that's why it's kind of weird. Uh, if you ever read that stuff. Good to know. Yeah. But uh, it may surprise some people that you can actually write fantasy without uh, being on drugs. I do it every week. That's right. It, it's Although called, it's I, called my Minecraft series. <laughs> Yes, but a pipe does help. Unless you're actually trying to do this while playing a video game, then it doesn't help at all. You have to do it all no. on the fly. And Right now, I'm being two of me. It's really great. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, uh, but the, the main thing that we're watching right now is uh, Baby Shark. And uh, do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. and uh, needs to go away, do, 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 do. needs to go away. <laughs> well, what I've found is actually because when I was when we first had Milo, like uh, another friend of mine, him and his wife were like, uh, avoid baby shark, avoid baby shark, it's so annoying. And I see a lot of stuff of like how baby shark drives people crazy. I will say, if it's songs that aren't the, the theme over and over, like, redone, uh, it's not bad. Like, uh, uh, it's, like, you know, enjoyable. Uh, even when it's, like, a, 
a real variation of it. Like uh, there was one where they turn into uh, they're like kind of like robot superheroes, and uh, that one is uh, much more palatable as well. But uh, for some reason, like it breaks my mom whenever it's on. Uh, but uh, and, and yeah, and she's like, I don't really, like whenever Grandma Shark does her thing. She's like, I don't really sound like that, do I? It's like, no, Mom, you're okay. No, no, that's when you go, yes, Mom. I've been following you around with a with, with a with a tape recorder, like with, with, with one of those mini tape recorders, like or voice mm-hmm. recorders, the, dig- the digital version of what I said. And I've been getting clips of you for the people who made that song. That's your voice. That's how you sound. <laughs> and she goes, no. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I've just been watching a lot of Baby Shark and uh, PBS stuff. Uh, for myself, uh, hasn't really been a whole lot of things other than I have been watching a couple documentaries by a YouTuber by the name of uh, Summoning Salt, who uh, does videos on um, the video game speedrunner world records. So, like, he has one video that's all about uh, the history of speedrunning the original Super Mario Brothers on NES. Uh, warpless. Uh, or, uh, like, what's the fastest time without using, like, a major glitch to, to break the game? Like, small ones are fine, but, like... Uh, ones where you like do something and like immediately beat the game or something are not allowed. Um, and just the, the stories of like how people like figure out like how to shave time off and, uh, and do it has been kind of fascinating. It's not some like, I wouldn't want to watch somebody trying to do it over and over, but being a fan of history, uh, I like it. So and they're well done. If you had to watch one, I would recommend uh, the one for Punch-Out for the NES. Because there is one guy that managed to get uh, all the records with uh, really impossible-looking times. And the the whole hour-long documentary was about uh, the years-long effort it took for somebody to, uh, for people to actually break those records. That's enjoyable. So, uh, and it's a kind of a fun story. How about you? What have you been watching? Lots of YouTube. Lots of YouTube. Practically all my entertainment's on YouTube. Personal, My personal entertainment's on YouTube. Lots of Minecraft. Lots of D&D. Ooh. Those are the flavors right now, actually. Um, TV show-wise, of course, I'm watching The Book of Boba Fett, but... That's kind of the other podcast job, so can't be on something called Star Wars TV Talk and not watch Star Wars. Right. Uh, just real quick, uh, how have you been liking that? Oh, it's fun. That's all I have to say about it. It's fun. Okay. Uh, would you say uh, uh, it's uh, one of the better Star Wars uh, Disney shows or... Uh, no. I am really the worst person to be talking about shows, really, when you think about it. Because I go into the show and hope to enjoy the show, not for the fact that it's Star Wars or Star Trek or The Flash or whatever. I go into it to see if I enjoy the show. And I have yeah. been enjoying Boba Fett. It's fun. I've been seeing a lot of stuff about, you know, complaints and whatnot about mm-hmm. the Book of Boba Fett from people. And all I have to say to them, I say on Star Wars TV Talk. <laughs> yeah. So if you want those opinions, StarWarsTVTalk.com, find the podcast, you'll hear me say them. Right. Yeah, no, and I had been seeing that, and so that was one of the reasons why I was kind of curious, like, uh, what your what your thought was on it, but uh, you know I have no. Uh, my feeling is always is like even if it's something that uh, you know I may be like oh I really hate that show or whatever like watch what you like you know that's a, ultimately my watch what you my like. uh, philosophy and uh, 
you know, even if I think like, like if you like the flash right now and uh, like where it, it's gone and stuff, like, uh, you know, I'm happy for you. I'm not uh, here to, you know, rain on anyone's parade. If, if something doesn't, uh, you know, really in, is something that I really enjoy, then, you know, I, I'll at least, you know, I'll speak my mind, but, uh, you know, if you are enjoying it, my goal isn't for you to start hating it. Like, to me, that's uh, not something I would want to be as, like, someone that argues stuff. You know, if maybe if we were both in the same pitching room for, like, where to take a show or something, I may, uh, you know, be a little bit more active. But, uh, you know, it's... We need to find things that we just uh, enjoy in life. And, again, like... You know, having seen enough internet arguments, <laughs> <I'm>, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't, uh, I don't care to be like uh, get, getting people to hate things. No, me neither. Although, uh, <laughs> after my uh, my friends saw um, the Last Jedi, I did send them, uh, and it, they were like, oh, "I don't think I really like that one. I don't know what my thoughts are." I sent them. Uh, bias confirming uh uh youtube things to uh <laughs> help make sure that uh well not make sure but uh that uh expounded upon my my own opinion of it when i when i learned what it was about but again anyway i will say this because i've already said it and that particular topic's run its course on the other show mm-hmm but what I have been enjoying about the Book of Boba Fett is the deep dive they're taking into the Tuscan culture. Hmm. Now, it, I can understand some of the concerns people are having with the Book of Boba Fett because it's not your typical Star Wars show. Yeah. I mean, lots of action, some decent choreographing, and don't get me wrong, those things are the, those things are the same. But the way they present it is Mandalorian-like and Arrow-like. You have failed, Tatooine. No, that doesn't come up, but you you get those vibes. You really do. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's... I I haven't really looked into it. Uh, Again, life and stuff. But, uh, you know... I always have a fond had a fondness for Boba Fett. Um, he was always like one of my favorites, uh, which uh, <laughs> I, I remember as a, uh, in my teenage years, one of my friends, because uh, you know, these were the years with like the where the VH, uh, VHS tapes were out, uh, the, the anniversary things, and you know we'd const- we would uh, often put them on during sleepovers and stuff, and uh, one of my friends was like. You really like Boba Fett, but like he, he dies, like like a wimp in uh, <laughs> Return of the Jedi, and uh, I had no real response for it other than. Mm. But he doesn't. Oh, I, I well, of course, like uh, well, I know that uh, you know the books and the you know extra stuff that came out afterwards. Obviously, uh, he he comes back, but. Uh, you know, it it was still you know it's just one of those like and he was teasing me too because it was, you know I I know he liked Boba Fett as well but uh, it it was just one of those things that you know as, as friends you kind of just like uh, do little fun uh, little like jabs at each other like that for sure for sure what else am I doing. Really, that that that's it. You know, kids keep you busy, especially when you have more than one, and one's mm-hmm. a handful. Usually, but yeah, it's it's kids and and making videos. That's that's my life right now. Yeah, no, uh, I I I feel that I hear you. It so, stinks because like. Christmas time, I picked up a couple of uh, Switch games, one of which was uh, like uh, Mario Kart 8, 
and uh, some other stuff. And I've had like barely any time to, to play any of it. Well, it's like today. I normally throughout the week at night will go on to the, the server that we play on and get the, you know, the, like there's building that's involved, but when you're making Minecraft videos, like, and you're doing a storyline and you're not just doing the builds, like there's building that gets involved and, and then there's mm -hmm. the story elements that you have to get involved with. And I haven't been able to do much of either. <laughs> So today I had to get on during my editing time because, well, when it comes down to it, when when I'm editing these videos and, and the podcast and whatnot for this, there's a lot of waiting involved when video is rendering and, 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 and MP3s are compressing and all that stuff going on. You throw it into the background and then you go on Minecraft in my case. And while I was doing that, I was sitting there and I was starting, I was starting to collect and get the video was and whatnot that I needed to stitch together for today <laughs> during editing. So I've been doing story element stuff, which I normally do well when in the week. And it was just one of those weeks where I'm sitting there going, nope, I don't want to play Minecraft every night this week. I'm going to watch some TV. And then you know what I don't do? I don't watch the first five episodes of The Flash yet again. Not that I don't want to watch them. There's just other things I want to watch more, apparently. Yeah. I hear you. I mean, I have uh, the new season of Cobra Kai just came out, and I want to see that. But, uh, you know, we're, my wife and I were just casually making our way through the latest season of uh, The Great British Baking Show. So... Here's a recommendation. Um, do you have uh, Amazon Prime? Yes. Okay, then you'll have access to it too. On uh, Prime Video, uh, one of their originals is called The Wheel of Time, based on the book series. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I have been watching that. We're on episode three or four, and uh, we've been enjoying it. I don't know how many episodes there are to it, we're just watching, you know, one a week here and there when we get a chance to have an hour together and watch some TV, and that's what we've been watching, and it's been quite enjoyable. It's high fantasy. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really helped out give give Agatha some per perspective on D and D because mm. there's uh, a spell one of her characters that in the game we play, other than the one different from the one that you and I play. Um, called Call Lightning. And in the premiere episode of this thing, the uh, witch lady, I don't I haven't quite heard what they call themselves in this series, mm -hmm. but it, that's basically it. She's a sorceress, I guess. She did this thing, and lightning struck. And I just looked at Agatha and go, that right there, what she just did, that's Call Lightning. That's what you did in the game last time. Oh, nice. So I'm sitting there going, if you're having trouble visualizing, that's what this is. Yeah. No, that that is helpful. No, I, I know of the books. Um... Apparently, from what I understand, there's quite a bit of uh, pipe smoking in them, and that uh, the author was a pipe smoker. Um, Very well could have been. I don't know. I tried reading the first book, The Wheel of Time. Mm -hmm. I think I made it 10 pages in, and then I stopped reading it. Mm. And as a matter of fact, I wasn't reading it. I was listening to it on Audible. Mm. I was going, nope. And I returned it. <laughs> mm. But I've been enjoying the the uh, the the, the uh, adaptation that uh, Amazon's put together on it. So, Ooh. jolly good. I'm hoping 
that when Amazon gets around to, and I've been seeing more about it, but when Amazon finally gets around to releasing their Lord of the Rings series, that it's just as successful as the Wheel of Time is, as far as execution goes. Uh, I, that, uh, that show worries me so much. Because apparently, uh, they want to do, uh, from, from everything that I've, I've heard about it. And again, you know, you know, people can, you know, watch and like it and stuff. But for me, like uh, everything I've heard of it, like, I'm just like very worried about it because it's, I don't think they're going to necessarily try to make it like the movies, but they're tr going to try to do it more in like a style of like, uh, Game of Thrones, where there's uh, possibly nudity and uh, sex stuff in it, and well, if they do that, then that that show will, in my opinion, fail. Mm -hmm. But I'll be honest; I'm not paying any attention to any of that because sure. if I were paying any attention to any of that, I would probably never watch it. I wouldn't even give it a chance. Yeah, that's just how I am. So right. I ignore. Part of the reason I've gotten off social media and stuff recently, because I'm getting tired of seeing all the spoilers and all that. So, yeah, that is a a bummer. I just my Twitter account's there, and I you know throw stuff to it, but it's all done automatically. Like, yeah, I have to say I'm uh, kind of enjoying social media a bit more right now, and it's only because of. Uh, Hype Twitter, like uh, I don't know. I've uh, found some. Uh, so um, Virginia Piper came back uh, after a couple, like almost a year absence, and uh, through him, like uh, just you know, posting and retweeting. Like he, in my opinion, like he's up there with like the Briar Report in terms of just like. Uh, people you want to follow on Twitter, like if you smoke a pipe and, uh, you know, great engagement. And then uh, I've just, uh, through that stuff, I've found, uh, you know, some new followers and, uh, made uh, new friends on, on there and everything along with the friends I already had. And it's just been, you know, maybe every day or so, or every other day, there's been like, a, you know, good conversation to come out of it. But uh, I would, uh, you know, I, I also got rid of my other Twitter handle that was more focused on, like, uh, um, video games and other things. And I, I don't lose sleep over quitting that. So I have all that stuff under the one handle. And uh, it's one of those things where I look at it and go, well... The bad for me right now is outweighing the good. So, yeah, I didn't shut the account down. I've shut down my Instagram because I'm not doing anything with it. I've shut down Facebook. I've shut down basically everything that isn't Discord or Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it, it might be worth just doing like a, a pipe only Twitter. Um, cause there are good people out there, uh, that I, and I have been enjoying the conversation. Uh, at least from what I've seen, I haven't seen too much. I um, don't but, but, uh, enjoy the conversation. I really don't. Okay. It's, mm. I don't know how to put it. There's nothing wrong with the conversation. It's not bad per se. I just don't enjoy it. Yeah. Makes me, uh, like, I, I really, pref I do really prefer uh, forums and uh, I do enjoy them. Uh, I need to go back to it uh, and uh, kind of involve myself more. Uh, have you ever read um, Screw Tape Letters? Uh, then it then it would be uh, 
this reference might be lost on you. I recommend it. It's a cool book by C.S. Lewis. Well, we we have uh, it. I just haven't had a chance to read it. I have four okay. kids. I don't read. Right oh, now. yeah. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I completely understand. But uh, yeah, well, you understand the, the premise of it. It's uh, letters from mm-hmm. uh, screw tape to his, uh, I think, a nephew. That's a, they're both demons. One's a, the older demon, one's a new demon trying to learn how to uh, uh, get a new Christian to give up on his beliefs. Well, uh, on tw- uh, Facebook, somebody, no, actually, I think I might have seen it on Twitter and then I posted it on my Facebook, but uh, there it was a funny one where it was like, um, uh, Dearest wor- a Wormwood, uh, invent Twitter, your affectionate uncle, screw tape. In terms of just, and, you know, it, it's a joke as in like, you know. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I was like, yeah, it's true. But anyway, I think on that note, I'll invent the new Twitter. I don't know what it'll be called, but I'll invent it. And then somebody will steal it from me and make lots of money. Or maybe you can be lucky and uh, be something like... um where you get bought out for billions of dollars. It's just too bad I don't have the technical know-how to do that, because I would take the buyout, absolutely. Yeah, maybe it'll be Microsoft that'll do that. Well, I did uh, I did boot up, uh, before we go, I did boot up uh, Minecraft again, because uh, on, my, on my Switch, because I would like to do more with it, but like... I feel like I just need to get one, get the handle on, on it all and stuff. And for me, I don't know if I, my interest is necessarily building as it is uh, just exploring like the world around me. And so like I, I came up with, you know, I just uh, created a, uh, you know, a non survival world where, you know, you know, it, but safe space essentially <laughs> to, uh, do what I wanted and uh, just started kind of like jumping around and exploring the world and just seeing what was uh, made out of it because it is a good art, art style. I like it. Um, and that's mainly like if there was ever, it's one of the reasons why I like the game uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild where it's essentially just, uh, yeah, there's combat and everything, but there's just so much to explore that uh, it, it's uh, a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm hoping to play around with it some more. Oh, no, I, I know exactly what you mean. The other, the other day um, on, the, on the server that I play on, that I make the videos for, I just randomly one day decided, you know what? I'm not doing anything. I just grabbed a couple of pair of wings, threw them on, and grabbed a couple of stacks of rockets and just flew around the world just to see what was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was just something, uh, you know, that uh, part of me that likes uh, exploring places and kind of looking around like nooks and crannies and stuff like that, uh, it really scratches that itch. That's actually how I found the place that I'm building my castle on that, wor- on that world right now. Nice. I was just randomly looking around for her. I got lost, actually, is what happened. I'd left uh, the main city or at spawn that we, were, that we were building. I was heading back to my base. And I took a... I, I veered off course. And I needed to get my bearings and check something because I forgot the coordinates. I'm bad at the coordinates. So I landed on this cliff. And I looked out over it and looked looked around it and there was a fairly substantial plains on the top of this cliff face followed by and behind it's a dark oak forest with the big mushrooms and all that stuff for those of you who don't know minecraft that's what's in the dark oak forest dark oak some oak and a bunch of big mushrooms and down below it was uh is a uh, a river and it's mostly a birch forest but 
it's a great spot. And I mean, it's not that far from from the city, but far enough that between it's about halfway between my starter, where I started out, and the city. So I'm sitting going, why not? This is this is exactly what I've been looking for is for build for building a castle. So I've got a, ca a castle built up over it. Um, we just switched over to hard mode, so the zombies are taking out the wooden doors now. So I just lost four doors. So now i got to figure out a way to keep the main doors. Ooh. But most people would just come in through the porthole or, for, or the, for the, the porthole. We're not on the ship. The portal. And... Or fly into the into the wall, like fly in through into the into the walls from above. So you know, I've got the walls around. I've just putting the. I've just finished putting the the pe. Like, you, you know, you know, you know the, the the spiral tower like fantasy. You know, cone type yeah. uh, roofs on the peaks, and I just finished putting the keep in, and I've got the one spire on it. I'm just gonna finish up. I'm basically, I'm just working on finishing up the keep. And then I got to put, you know, the ramparts on and whatnot. And but I just got to figure out how to make these doors work now because they won't a target trap doors. But I've got to figure out how I need to make these steel doors open, uh, the iron doors open now. Hmm. Otherwise, every time I'm in there at night and zombies find out I'm in there, they're going to take out the doors. So we're on hard mode. So, I mean, that's what happened. I was up working and it was nighttime and I was the only one on so nobody was sleeping <laughs> and uh, some zombies were trying to pathfind to me so they took out the doors all four of them and then I had to go down and clear my clear my thing so that wasn't fun yeah no, it's, a, it's a fascinating game and uh yeah, you know, I know that with it, like the the stuff that goes on, you can get some really fun uh, kind of stories out of it. I'm thinking. I don't know how well this is this is going to work, but I'm thinking I'm going to try to build in a piston door where my wooden doors and tra wooden trap doors used to be and make it like, you know, like an actual gates that you control by, can control by levers. Mm -hmm. So that's going to take some testing in my redstone world. Cause I want to use the iron, I want to use iron bars so that it looks yeah. like a, a real, it looks like a castle gate. That's what I want it to look like. Mm hmm. I know I could just, you know, drop some pistons down and make it look like, and do that to close it off. Then the zombies are, are, are and whatnot are out. But no, I want to do this. So I'm going to have to try to figure out how to make that work. As long as I don't have to get into double piston extenders, I'll be fine because I'm not that good at redstone yet. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. But it's been an interesting conversation from weather to politics to COVID to video games to what we're watching to to Minecraft and Redstone. I think we've covered it. Yeah. Well, not too political. I'm, I'm trying to stay no, no. away from that. Uh... It wasn't. But for an episode that we went into not knowing what we were going to talk about, we talked about enough, I think. Yeah, no. We didn't even get to uh, my pipe questions that I was going to say. Well, we'll wow. just have to uh, put a pin in those and yeah. maybe do those next week. Yeah, which uh, um, we'll, we'll talk more about it off the air. But uh, uh, there's a possibility that I will be going to the St. Louis Pipe Show in about two weeks. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Okay, well, with that in mind, we will wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Chat with you later.